All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve systems of equations and industrial models. So we can do like we have done uh, in previous lessons, but now we've learned a new way. We can use matrices to solve systems of equations uh, by using the inverse matrix. So the equation x equals a inverse times b. So assume we have this, we're given this matrix, and so this will be our a. This would be, even though I used x, y here just to, to simplify, but so this is our x's in a minute, and this is our b, when it equals. So we can rewrite this out as a system of equations, where negative 4 times x is negative 4x, negative 2 times y is negative 2y, and then equals negative 32, and then negative 3x minus y equals negative 20, just like we were doing in four multiplying matrices in 4.4. And now to solve this, I can go back where I was. So a equals negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. Uh, I find my inverse of that by doing what we learned in the last video. Um, and then b equals negative 32, 30. And now I will replace these with x1 and x2 just to follow along what the book does. And I basically use the formula, oops, x equals the multiplication or the product of the matrix of the inverse matrix of A times B. So I got my matrix inverse A here. And I have my B here. <coughs> now remember, I multiply half of, so one half times negative 32. and then negative one times 20. So half of 32 would be negative 16. Well, that's a negative 20. And negative one times negative 20 is a positive 20, which then equals four, which is where my four came from. And then I do the same thing here. I do negative one half times negative 32 2 times negative 20, add them together, and that's where I get my 8. Again, just like we were doing before. We're basically taking everything we've learned in this last couple of weeks, and now we can use it to solve for x's. I've basically shown you multiple different ways to solve a system of equations, and this one is just using the inverse. Our next example, I could do the same thing, where I have my A matrix. I am adding some coefficient matrix. A constant matrix, um, and then I got my b, right? So what I can do is rewrite this out. So 5x1, 2x squared, minus 7 equals 10, and then 4x1, 6x squared, minus 8 equals 9. I can move all the coefficients to one side to create my b, right? Because I can move him over here, which gives me 17, Move him over here, which gives me 17. Remember, when you move, you do the opposite. So negative 7 becomes a plus 7. Negative 8 becomes 8. And so my new B matrix is 17, 17. And again, use previous lessons to find my inverse. And now I have my inverse and I have my B. I multiply my inverse times my B. And I get my answer. I could also find this I M minus one, and we're gonna use this a lot in 4.7, and then I talk about how we find I minus M in 4.7, but if I have my matrix M, and I wanna subtract my identity, so my I minus M, so again, what if I write this out so you can see what I did, because I'm doing a little, few less steps in this video, because we've done a lot of these calculations in the previous videos, and at the end of the video, I'm actually gonna show you how I use technology to solve these answers even quicker. And you can do them by hand or use tech completely up to you. And in the book, it shows you how to use a TI-84. I don't go through that because um, I use uh, algebra, I mean, uh, not algebra, Excel. So now I can just subtract these, right? So one minus 0.4 is 0.6. Zero minus 0.2 is a negative 0.2. Zero minus 0.7 is negative 0.7. And one minus 0.1 is 0.9. And so there is how I got my I minus M matrix. Then 
I can find my inverse. So this is one of the problems in 4.7 that was strictly out of the book. And so we'll come back to this here in a second. Um, but let's talk about how we find a solution of what we call a two industry output. All right. So X is our output, our total output. MX is our internal demand. And D is our final demand. Right? And so if I take my internal demand and I add to my final demand, I will get my total output. Well, now we can do some algebra here. So x equals mx plus d. So I subtract mx. So I get x minus mx equals d. I can then pull out a x because it's a common factor, which gives me i minus mx equals d. And then when I move i m in as a group to the side, that creates the inverse. So x equals i minus m inverse plus d, which is what we just learned how to do up here in example three. So that is the reason for it. And so when we're creating this column, right, we're coming up with two technologies. And so I'm going to try to highlight them here. So I, and you could read the problem. Uh, the economy of a small uh, island nation is based on two sectors, agriculture. So I call this A and tourism T. Production of dollars worth of agriculture is required as an input of 0 0.39 from agriculture and 0 0.43 from tour tourism. Production of a dollar's worth of tourism requires an input of 0 0.55 from agriculture again, and 0.35 for tourism. So I'm going to highlight these in different colors, one for agriculture and one for tourism. Find the output of each sector that is needed to by the final demand of 27 million for agriculture and 75 million for tourism. So that's one reason I didn't use the X1, X2 here because I wanted to see how I put my things together. So my first equation is agricultural and tourism, right? Because remember we multiply going down. So this is 0.39A and 0.43T, right? That's why those go there. And then my 5, 5, and 3, 5 go together because, again, 5, 5 times A, 35 times T equals 75. All right, so if I write this out, 0 0.39 agriculture plus 0 0.43 tourism equals 27 and 0 0.55 agriculture plus 0 0.35 tourism equals 75. And then we can basically solve it this way. So what I've done here is we'll go open up our Excel again. Open an Excel. And so you can see I put some 4.5 in here. So you can see those different ones that we did in 4.5. And, and then here's the problems I did here in 4.6. And this is where I created my identity matrices and did out all the calculations so you can review this. Interestingly enough, if you hit Control, Shift, Enter, then that will create an identity matrix by using the commands matrix inverse. So what you do is you, let's see if I can do this without, because I'm on my iPad, so we'll see if this actually works. I know, I'll just recreate it over here so I don't mess up my iPad, if I can get off this thing. Try that again.
So, try this again here. Type in an equals matrix inverse. There it is. I double click. I highlight. No, oh, no, I messed up. That's why I always forget this one step. Discard my changes. Much easier if you're not doing this on a tablet. There we go. Highlight the whole section. Equals matrix inverse. And then I see if this will let me work here because then I highlight my matrix. Hit return. And it actually did work. So it's a little trickier on an iPad. But basically what you do, highlight where you want your inverse matrix to go. And then type in the M inverse, and then go highlight the inverse you're taking in matrix, and then hit Control Shift Enter, um, and there is your answer. Or you can do like we've done in the steps, so we can leave him for now. So to follow this last problem, let's go down to example four point seven. I put in my M matrix. I created an I matrix. I did I minus M, so you can see my Excel code here, where I just did, I got them backwards on the screen here, but I did do I minus M, because you can see it's E41 minus B41, the blue minus the pink. Um, and then I did that through every one of these tabs, which gives me my I minus M matrix. Then I came down here and did the whole matrix inverse, and got my inverse matrix and then I put in my demand matrix and then finally my AT there is my code I took my IM inverse matrix A11 multiplied it by my first demand one plus my alpha one two times my demand two and hit enter and there is my first agriculture total and then I find my total output for agriculture and then there's my total output for tourism by doing the exact same thing by taking the second row of I'm um, second column no I was right sorry second row and multiplying it by the demand and adding them together to get this so please review the Excel practice with it if you like it you may use it for the course if you still want to do things by hand then that's what we've done for these last couple sections and again leave any comments or questions and i will get back to you thank you have a wonderful day